guys, welcome back to part two of Necessity of Friction on Incline. So to refresh your memory, in video 81, we looked at the following problem. A 1200 kilogram car rounds a curve of radius 65 meters banked at an angle of 12 degrees. If the car is traveling at 93 kilometers per hour, will a friction force be required? If so, how much and in what direction? So the idea is this, the idea explored in videos 80 and 81. If your curve is banked at the exact perfect angle, friction is not needed, okay? And if you happen to go too slow on that curve, uh, static friction goes up. If you go too fast, static friction goes down, okay? So if you're not sure about that, be sure to check out video 81 to see where we went with that. Okay, so in this question, we already looked at the case of no friction. We calculated the centripetal force. It was about 12.288 thousand. Okay, so that's a lot of newtons. But in the x direction, the only force, if we ignore friction, is the normal force in the x direction, which only amounted to 2,499. Clearly a lot less than this. So that means friction is a requirement and we are gonna calculate how much that friction force is. Now, as I stated in video 81, you can't just subtract these two numbers because we figured out the normal force here due to only considering two forces in the y direction. If you now have a third force of friction going down the incline, there's a third y component to consider, which changes the normal force here, changing that there, changing the overall f and x. Okay, so let's jump into that. If we're dealing with friction, let's do our free body diagram again. You've got your banked, a banked curve, you've got your car on the curve, and let's draw our forces. We've got gravity going straight down. We've got the normal force perpendicular, so far it's the same. And now we're gonna have friction going down the incline. F, F, S, okay? So there are my forces. Now, just like in the previous problem, I'm gonna let up be positive Y, to the right be positive X, which means I have to break this up into components, each these two forces. So F, F, S has an X component and a Y component. So that side there is gonna be F, F, S, Y, and this side, F, F, S, X. Same with the normal force. It has a Y component and an X component. Okay, so the X component is F and X, and the Y component, F and Y. Okay, so we got our forces there. Now, I wanna work with the X direction here, right? Because that's the one that deals with the friction force and the centripetal force. Okay, so let's start that. Uh, in the X direction, We know that there is an acceleration. The acceleration in the x direction is the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so F net x is equal to the centripetal force. Okay, so in this case we have F and x, uh, pardon me, F and x, and F of s x. And they're both going to the right in the positive direction. So F and x plus F of, you know what actually, we're not told it's static friction, so we can just call it F of x. Okay, it'll save you a subscript to have to keep writing. Okay, so FFX, there we go. Um, centripetal force, mv squared over r, because there is an acceleration there, centripetal. Okay, equals, now F and x, the x component is the hypotenuse times sine of theta. So Fn sine theta. Likewise, FFX, this side, of the right angle triangle. Okay, that's that angle in there is theta, so it's gonna be F F times cosine of theta. Yep, okay. Plus F F cosine theta. So there's my equation. Now I'm missing something here, and that is Fn. I can't really figure that out. Okay, so I gotta figure out what that is because in the end, this is my goal, the force of friction. Mass I have, speed I have, radius of the curve I have. Let's figure out the normal force so then I can go ahead and plug it in here. So since I didn't get the normal force from the x direction, I'm gonna now start working in the y direction and determining that. Okay, so in the y direction, uh, let's do that here. Oh no, let's do it over here. Y direction. In the y direction, acceleration is zero, right? Because the car's not bobbing up and down. F net y is equal to zero. In the y direction, we've got the normal force going up 
we've got friction going down, the y component, and we've got gravity also going down. So this is equal to FNY minus FFY minus FG. Okay, next, okay, let's rewrite that again. Zero equals FNY is simply FN cosine of theta. Okay, force of friction in the y direction is uh, only going to be FF times sine theta, so minus FF sine theta minus mg. Okay, so I'm going to bring the fn. I want to get fn by itself. So actually, if I bring the fn to the left, it becomes negative. I don't want that. So let's take these two negative expressions and bring it to the left. And I'm just going to reverse the order of how I write it. So it's a little bit easier okay, to solve. So fn cos theta equals ff sine theta plus mg. Therefore, fn is equal to ff sine theta plus mg divided by cos theta. So if you compare that to what we had before, remember this? We found fn is equal to mg over cos theta. We just determined if you include friction too, this is your new normal force. It's force of friction uh, sine theta plus gravity divided by cos theta. So there's a little bit more going on there. Okay, that's why you couldn't just subtract the numbers. Okay, so I've got my normal force, and up here, I've got the normal force here too. I'm not going to isolate for it. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in. So if I call this expression 1 and I call this one expression 2, then essentially what I am tasked with doing now is setting 1 equal to 2 and solving for force of friction. Okay, so here we go. If you stuck it out in videos 80 in 81, okay, this is going to be no problem for you because you've seen these long, crazy amounts of math before. Okay, so here we go. Uh, mv squared over r. Equals, uh, now equals fn sine theta. Replace fn with a large set of brackets and inside those brackets, you're going to write this expression right here. Okay, so equals fn sine theta plus ff cos theta. And remember, that's our target to get ff. Okay, so plug in your normal force. Okay, so we found that to be ff sine theta plus mg divided by cos theta. Okay, so you could expand it to the sine theta, or you can recognize sine over cos, that's tangent. Okay so, okay, so let's expand that out now. So we still have mv squared over r on the left. Sine theta over cos theta, that's tan theta. Bracket ff sine theta plus mg plus ff cos theta. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is expand this out. Because my goal is to get force of friction. Right now, they're in two separate terms. So let's expand that out. So we're going to get ff sine theta tan theta plus mg tan theta plus ff cos theta. And all that's equal to mv squared over r. So let's collect our ffs. Okay, so I'm going to factor that out. I'm going to bring the mg tan theta to the left. So therefore I get mv squared over r. mv squared over r minus mg tan theta equals, factor out the force of friction, sine theta tan theta plus cos theta. Okay, now to get ff by itself, you have to divide both sides by this expression. And, and I'm going to just rewrite ff on the left, the other stuff on the right, so it looks more convenient. ff equals mv squared over r minus mg tan theta divided by sine theta tan theta plus cos theta. And there is my expression for force of friction. So all that's left for me to do is plug in my numbers and punch them into the calculator. Okay, so mv squared, okay, so mass of the car, 1200 kilograms. My speed, I calculated at the beginning of video 82. 
25.8 meters per second. That's squared minus 1200 times G, 9.8 newtons per kilogram, times tangent of theta. Theta is 12 degrees. Oh, I forgot the R here. The mv squared over r, the radius is 65 meters. All of that divided by sine of 12 degrees times tangent of 12 degrees plus cosine 12 degrees. Okay, a lot of stuff's going on here. And again, just like I mentioned in the previous two videos, to avoid making a mistake, do these separately. Don't try to be a superhero and plug them all in at once because you're just gonna end up potentially losing marks. So I would do this piece first, then this piece, then the bottom piece. Okay, so the top left piece, if you find that, you are going to get 12288.73846 kilogram meter per second squared minus the next piece you're going to get 2499.665165 newtons divided by 1.02234. Now notice kilogram meter per second squared and newton are the same unit. Okay, that's what a, a newton is by definition. Okay, so then do your top difference divided by the bottom number and you are going to get 9575.16 newtons. And if we want to round that to the correct number of sig figs, which would be two, we get that the force of friction is 9.6 times 10 to the 3 newtons and of course this has to be going down the plane. I know it's going down the plane because the value came out positive and because I defined positive to be down the plane in the original question therefore this has to be down the plane. Okay so that's it for this video guys if you liked it be sure to click that like button and subscribe to Physics in the Flesh so you never miss a video from me. Thank you so much for watching.